Hello and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included. In today's episode, we're going to be covering the STEAM Research Rocket. The STEAM Research Rocket is basically the first rocket that you're going to launch as part of your space program in Oxygen Not Included. And today we're going to go over why you want to go to space, what resources you need in order to go to space, uh, and also how you should build your STEAM rocket, in my opinion. Um, there are going to be some other builds out there, but I think this is the best one and I'm going to cover why. So, uh, first off, why do you want to go to space? Well. There are a lot of resources out there in space. Uh, there are renewable sources of water and fuel. Um, there are new critters out there that you can gather. Any flora and fauna that aren't indigenous to your asteroid, you can probably find in space. Uh, various metals and other things can be found in space. Diamond, refined carbon, etc. There's pretty much everything that you can want in space. And also space is home to a lot of unique resources. Uh, among these are things like artifacts, which uh, provide a significant decor bonus to your base. Uh, but most importantly, space has the components necessary to build things like supercoolant or thermium or insulation or viscogel. And these four resources are really important to a lot of builds. Um, a lot of your high temperature stuff, your really efficient uh, high temperature builds are going to be using things like thermium, insulation, and supercoolant. Uh, and so you're going to want a lot of these resources in, in fairly large amounts for doing your sort of in-game uh, final builds, the most efficient things that you can build in the game. That's a lot of the, the motivation for going to space. You're going to need a lot of things in order to go to space first, though. Uh, for one, you're going to need an astronaut. Uh, and that's not uh, an easy matter if we go over to here. Uh, here I have Ashcan as an astronaut. Uh, it's taken him seven skill points to get up to rocket piloting, which is the bare minimum you need in order to, uh, to pilot a rocket. You can also get rocket navigation for another point, which will give you navigation efficiency, um, which will mean basically that the rocket travels faster, which is nice. Um, but other than that, you need these seven skill points, and that takes about 100 cycles, roughly speaking, for a duplicate to develop. Seven skill points is roughly 100 cycles worth of learning. Um, so. If you take one of your original duplicates and, and train them, basically, or have them just learn along this path for 100 cycles, finally on the 100th cycle you'll get to an astronaut, uh, which is necessary to, to, to fly a rocket. So there's a pretty big investment uh, in terms of having a duplicate that can meet these morale needs and having a duplicate that's basically devoted just to this one track. Um, it's not the worst thing in the world because Research is a pretty good thing to unlock on at least one of your duplicates. And then getting them carrying and exosuit wearing are pretty useful as well. So it's not like these are useless skills, these kind of first prerequisite six. Uh, but it's just a lot of skill points you need to unlock. And you're kind of going to be gated. So if you're thinking about um, speed running a, a launch into space, just keep in mind, this is probably going to be the most limiting factor, is just the 100 cycles or so that you're going to need to develop a, a duplicate up to the point where they can be an astronaut. Um, also, you're going to need to make a lot of progress on your research tree, at least to introductory rock to rocketry, and if you want to continue on to solid fuel combustion, hydrocarbon combustion, etc., the sort of the more advanced rockets, you're also going to need to go down this jetpacks route, which is a lot of things. It's, it's all the way from interior decor over to here and ventilation. And then finally, uh, all of this chain, starting with plumbing and going to advanced caffeination. You need to know how to make a coffee maker before you can make a jetpack. Um, so there's a whole chain of things you need to research as well to get down here. I'm not exactly sure why interior decor is now what leads to automation, but they're rearranging this. This might change. Just keep that in mind. They are kind of sifting around things, but you're going to need to get a lot of research done in order to get to here as well. And finally, you're going to need to build the rocket itself. Uh, here I've built two of them. You could just get by with one, I suppose, if you were some sort of plebeian. Um, but you're going to need to build a rocket and you're going to need to fuel it, in this case with steam. It's a steam rocket and you'll need to pump a bunch of steam into it. So that's a fairly large amount of resources in itself. Um, this steam engine is, I believe, 2,000 kilograms of steel, which is a pretty good amount of steel. And each of these research modules is, I think, 200 kilograms of steel. Yeah, 200 kilograms. You're going to need a command capsule. That's a lot of steel as well. This is another 200 kilograms. You have a gantry, which is going to be made out of steel. That's 200 kilograms. You're going to have bunker doors. These are going to be made out of steel. These are 500 kilograms a piece. You're going to have a bunch of bunker tiles, presumably. They're going to be using steel to protect your space scanner slash telescope setup. 
So there's a lot of steel that you're going to need to make this build uh, work that's just necessary. There's no replacement component for you know these steam engines and whatnot. And uh, that's going to take a lot of refining and whatnot as well. And then finally, you're going to need, at some point, and this is going to be the topic of a separate video, some sort of telescope, maybe with a space scanner automation setup. Uh, and you're going to need to use these telescopes to research the destination that you want to, to visit. So, for example, I've left this one unresearched. Here's a carbon asteroid that I can launch a mission towards because I have uh, analyzed it with a telescope. And here's another destination that I can't launch a mission at because I haven't done uh, the, the research. Uh, completing analysis on an object will unlock rocket missions to that destination, right? So you do need to research the target as well before you can launch a mission. So you're going to need a telescope and some setup for that. Again, that's going to be the subject of a separate video. Uh, but just these are sort of the things that you need to be aware of. You're going to need an astronaut. That's going to take you about 100 cycles to, to skill them up. Uh, it's, you're going to need research. That's going to take however amount of time it takes, depending upon how quickly you're going through your research. You're going to need a lot of steel, so you're going to need metal refineries and things of that sort up and running, and you'll need to dig up enough lime and fossil and whatnot to make the steel in the first place. Uh, you're going to need to build your rocket, you're going to need your telescope, you're going to need to fuel up your rocket. Um, but once you've kind of gotten all those things squared away, and you have, you know, you say to yourself, well, I think I have good reason to go to space, and I have the resources to go to space, what do you want to do? Next, well, I think the next thing you want to do is basically build what I have built right here, which is I've taken, uh, and this will probably be made out of ceramic, this insulation. I'm using just insulation insulation for demonstration purposes. But you're going to want to build a giant ceramic tube, basically, with some bunker doors at the top, sort of right at the edge of space here. These tiles are exposed to space. These tiles are not exposed to space, right? Right at the edge of this sort of um, divide between exposed to space and not, you want to set up your rocket silo. It's going to be all interior and lined with insulation. And in this, you're going to build your rockets. Here I have two rockets with gantries supplying either side, so a, a duplicate can go and enter the command capsule. You'll basically put a duplicate in here and then retract these gantries. Uh, you will need a bunch of steel. All I, This is basically nine research modules that I've built here. Uh, the reason for that is that is the maximum that a steam engine is able to carry to the uh, closest destination. So that's what we're going with. I want as many as possible. Uh, we've got our steam engine and then I've built down here uh, with mesh tiles as sort of the flooring, I have built this big thermal mass slash steam generator. I've taken a bunch of storage bins that I've made out of granite and I've filled them with hot regolith that I've gathered from the surface. Uh, this is a debug world so my solution has literally just been to build a giant uh, bunker tile wall at the top. Uh, but just you know, so you can see, this regolith comes in at about 300, 320 degrees, right? Uh, here is this bunch of stuff buried with it as well. You're going to get some iron and mafic rock in here as well. That's all fine. Uh, in this case, I've just stored a bunch of regolith down here. You can store that hot iron and mafic rock as well. Um, the easiest way to do that is simply to leave these doors open because you want to vacuum out this room anyways at the start and just set up some, some automatic dispensers, hook them up, uh, tell them that they can accept regolith, uh, iron, and mafic rock. And then whenever, when your duplicates are digging out the surface and removing that regolith, you can just have it all dumped down into uh, your area where you'll load it up into these storage bins. But that's what I've done here. I've taken a bunch of these storage bins. I have loaded them up with uh, regolith, nice hot regolith. And this is going to be what generates our steam. And this entire insulated tube that I have here, I'm going to fill up with steam. And I'm just going to take that steam and pump it into my steam engines. And every time there's a rocket launch with one of these rockets, it's going to create more heat and more steam inside of this uh, sort of silo slash steam generation room, which is going to mean more fuel for future launches. Um, now the water that I'm about to pump in is at 95 degrees, which is roughly the water temperature that you get out of a cool steam vent if you had just condensed the water down. It's what you get out of a turbine. Um, if you put in colder water, obviously it's going to take a little bit more time for it to turn into steam. But the key here is that we've put in so much hot regolith into this room uh, that there's really no way for this not to eventually get converted to steam, right? The, the thermal mass of this regolith is so high. Here I've put in four tons per storage bin. You can crank this all the way up to 
to 20 tons if you like. Um, it's just a matter of how much time you want to spend having your duplicants load up this stuff. Uh, but the basic setup is insulated tube, a steam generation area with using hot regolith that we've mined from the surface, which we can probably have just dumped down using uh, these automatic dispensers. Don't build this gantry before you start doing this, uh, I guess is one trick of that. Um, and then the room itself is vacuumed out during this process, right? We just leave this part open, let it vacuum out to space is really uh, an easy solution. And we have set up these liquid locks on the side here. Um, the, this, these liquids, in this case crude oil, because this room is going to be hot, so I don't want this to be water that might boil off. Um, this crude oil is going to prevent air from moving between these areas. And so duplicates that walk through here will be able to access these areas without bringing in oxygen or some other element into this room. And also because of this, there's not going to be any heat transfer from uh, this, this, these storage bins that I've filled full of hot stuff at the start. So this is not going to be a scalding environment. I'm not going to worry about taking damage to any of my parts or anything like that. Um, this is all just going to sort of work um, because I've, I've vacuumed out the room as well. So I have here a sort of AtmoSuit dock combined with a liquid lock uh, to keep one side vacuum while the other side can be oxygenated. And that's how duplicates are going to access this area and load up these storage bins. Um, and yeah, uh, let's go ahead and just connect up at this point our connect up our pumps and we can see that they will start pumping water up through here. Let me slow this down. The water is going to be pumped up uh, out into these liquid vents. Liquid vents are going to drop the water down here and then we're going to see steam start to generate. Now if you use colder water and if you haven't like I have uh, run this system before just to make sure that it works because um, a lot of these components right now you can see are pretty hot. These won't start off hot. Um, if, you, if the room is colder and the water is colder, it's going to take longer for your steam to generate. In this case, everything starts off hot. The water starts off near boiling to begin with, which is a major factor in this. And so we see steam just start to generate, right? Once you have a pretty good amount of steam sort of uh, built up, we're going to turn on these gas pumps. And the way I've set up these gas pumps is I have a sort of steam storage area here uh, that, that two gas pumps will feed into. Um, this will make sure that uh, I always sort of have a ready steam, supply of steam ready to go into the rocket. Um, but basically the way I have it set up is that I have two pumps per rocket um, and one pump bridges onto the line of the other pump. So each pump will pump 500 grams per second of steam um, and a pipe or a single gas duct can carry uh, one kilogram per second of steam. So two of them together will max out the capacity of a given uh, pipe, given gas duct. And you really can't load up a rocket any faster than that. Um, this port, this input port, will only accept one kilogram per second anyways. Uh, so you're kind of just limited to one pipe in. There is, of course, I mean, if they change that, you could eventually have it so that you have four gas reservoirs and each one uh, you know, kind of fills in one side, right? Like one comes in from the left, one comes in from the right, one comes in from the bottom, one comes in from the top. Um, but for now, you're limited by the, the port um, acceptance rate, which is just one kilogram per second. So there's no point in, in having it connect up other uh, ways. Even if you, basically there's a limit on how fast you can fuel up your rocket at the moment. Um, that is just one kilogram per second. So uh, now that we have a pretty good amount of steam here, uh, 6.1 kilograms per tile it looks like, and we'll see the steam just start to rise and fill this tube, right? Now we can go ahead and connect up our, uh, our pumps here. They'll turn on and we'll start pumping steam out. Notice that these packets are now merging. So we have 500 gram per second packets coming in from 500 gram per second packets coming in uh, through this line, 500 gram per second uh, packets coming in from this line, and then they're merging into one kilogram packets, which are then going into our rockets. Uh, so pretty simple, pretty easy. We're basically just taking this silo that we've made uh, with insulated tile all around, and we are using it to generate steam. And we will also, every time there's a launch, we will recover the steam from the launch Right, and be able to put it back into uh, into our system. So um, I suppose I might as well launch a rocket once we've got sort of the necessary fuel. That's gonna take a little while because it's only one kilogram per second. Let's go ahead and speed this up. 
And let's go ahead and extend out this transit tube. Something like this. Whoops. I might as well get an astronaut in there and show you guys how it's done. So we're just going to take an astronaut. We're going to toss him in there. Uh, I probably need to hook this gantry up. Conductive wire. Run this down here. Um, and then for opening and closing your doors, there are kind of two approaches you can take. Um, one is that you can have it automated on a system that involves these space scanners. You'll have a space scanner looking to detect whether or not a rocket is about to land, and you'll have a space scanner looking to detect whether or not there is a meteor shower. And you'll basically say, if the uh, rocket is about to land, then always uh, open the rocket doors because they'll destroy the rocket, they'll destroy the bunker doors anyways when it lands. You currently don't have control over when a rocket lands. A little ready to land thing will appear, but you don't actually get a choice in terms of when the rocket lands. I think they're gonna change that, and so an automation system might become more useful uh, in that sense. It'll let you, right, land when the time is appropriate, when there isn't a, uh, a meteor shower. For now, though, an automation system doesn't really work that well because you kind of have to land when you're going to land. So, in any case, um, there are some issues there. But uh, the other option is that you just do everything manually, which is not that hard either. So, um, the way you would do things manually is you would go to automation. Uh, you would grab yourself just an Atmo sensor, right? And we'll just uh, take an Atmo sensor and uh, put it anywhere here. Here's fine. Um, and we will say automation wire we can now automate up these doors and we can automate uh, this gantry right uh, and let's go ahead and not have it turn on right now yeah close close these doors please I don't want my steam getting out quite yet okay cool so um, and I guess I also need a not gate here. Because if I'm controlling them both off the same system. Um, automation, not gate. Slap one down right here. Automation wire, uh, let's not use lead. Iron's fine, there we go. So basically, uh, I have this Atmos sensor and we'll set this to 10,000, something ridiculous. And uh, basically what can happen is now when I just go and change this Atmos sensor from above to below, uh, the gantry will track and these bunker doors will open, right? So that's how you can automate, or not really automate, but that's how you can control uh, when you're ready to launch a rocket, when these doors open. You simply wait until it's uh, the right time, there's no meteor shower going on, and you launch your rocket. Um, an automated system would, of course, basically replace this Atmo sensor with some network of space scanners that send a signal of whether or not to open or close, depending upon uh, what the conditions are. Um, but again, because you don't really have control over when the rocket lands, this is of limited usefulness right now. You basically have to have this thing open whenever the rocket is about to land because uh, it, you, you can't choose when it lands. So that's one issue. How do I open and close these bunker doors? Simple Atmos sensor will do the job. The other one is how do I keep this area clear of regolith, right? Maybe uh, whatever my system is, I, I have exposure to space. Meteors can come down and hit the stuff. Uh, you kind of have two answers there. One is just robo miners, uh, and you can have the bunker tiles that they're attached to be cooled by something to uh, keep these things relatively cold. Um, you can also just have duplicates go out and dig these areas out before you launch a rocket. And the important thing is you're perfectly fine with any hot material that gets mined out here from falling down and entering your sort of steam tube, right? That's all well and good. You're perfectly fine with that. Um, I've got a lot of steam in my rocket uh, rocket room right now, so let's go ahead and turn off my pumps, right? I feel like I've got a pretty good amount of steam. I kind of wanted, I probably should have shut that off sooner because I wanted to show off the extra steam that the rocket generates for you. You're kind of recovering a lot of your heat and uh, steam. It's gonna be hard to notice when everything is, you know, 20 kilograms of steam anyways, but let's just turn that off for now and see if we can't get a, a good picture. Have I filled these up yet? I've almost filled them up. Okay, perfect. So, um, let me get rid of this and let me assign Ashcan right here. 
And I think he'll just fly up right now. And I think I've delivered... So he got a little bit scalded because I didn't have a uh, an Atmos suit for him to go in here. But that's fine. Insufficient resources, Atmos suit. Okay, so I also need to... You need to supply an Atmos suit, an individual Atmos suit to these command capsules. Uh, so that's also important. Let's go to spawner, equipment, uh, Atmos suit. Drop one down right here. And someone will run in here, get a little bit scalded, but deliver this Atmos suit. All right, Bubbles, you are, uh, you're are going to get popped to your drums too. This is not going to be fun. Okay, and how about you leave now? Wouldn't that be a great idea? Before, you know, you take too much damage and die or something. Okay, cool. Uh, so yeah, normally you'd have an atmosphere checkpoint. Basically the same thing as what we have down here for them entering and leaving this area. Um, but for now, I'm just willing to let them take a little bit of damage. So, you have all this done, right? You have your command guy in your command capsule. He has a Atmos suit delivered to him. Uh, he has everything he needs to launch the rocket. We're going to go and click on this rocket now and say show star map and say this will be our destination, right? So I have uh, roughly 0.9 tons. It's 0.875 tons of steam in my rocket. Uh, that's enough to reach this lowest destination with all the weight that I have. Basically just enough to reach that destination. Um, so we go ahead and we select that destination and hit close. Now, anytime we want to, we can activate this. These will open these doors. I will also, because I have this thing up here, need to not have this in the way. This is a little bit cheaty, but again, I'm just trying to just, <laughs> just trying to show off the idea. Um, so let's go ahead and clear out some of this. Have an open area for our rocket. And... We're going to launch a rocket. We could be launching two at once pretty easily. In fact, that'd be the most efficient thing because then you you know, can coordinate your launches really easily. Uh, but once we have this open, it says launch path blocked. I don't believe that. Okay, now it says launch path not blocked. So it was just waiting a little bit. Uh, we can go to our star map and we can say launch mission. And the rocket will take three cycles to go there and back after which point it will land. I'm wondering if we'll be able to see the extra steam that this generates. It went up a little bit. This is about 11.1 .1 and now it's 12.6. And we can toggle this back now. We lose some steam in this process, of course. That's fine though. Because we're going to get a lot of steam from the rocket and we can always just generate more steam. Uh, this regolith has cooled down to 190 degrees now, right? Through this process of heating up this steam. Uh, we can always put more regolith in here anytime we need to do more launches, basically. Uh, again, I've only put in 4 tons of the maximum 20 tons. And uh, we can just keep on refilling that regolith anytime we want. So, he's off to go to the closest destination. And you might be thinking, well, okay, why did we have this rocket with nine research modules, right? What was the point of nine research modules on our research rocket? Why did we build this so big? Well, nine is the maximum amount that we're able to put on our research rocket. That's why we stopped at nine. Um, but the question of why more than five is something that a lot of people ask, because if we go to the star map here, we see that there are five different research areas where you can gather research. And basically what this research is, is the rocket will bring back data banks. And these data banks can be processed in a virtual planetarium in order to generate research points. Uh, so if we go to research here, right, if we look at, um, whoa, that's not, there we go. Uh, if we look at our uh, rocket research area, we see that everything up to this point only required advanced research, which you got from a supercomputer, and basic research or novice research, which you got at a research station. These require this new orange research called interstellar research, and it is conducted at a virtual planetarium. The virtual planetarium consumes uh, data banks in order to do this research. So you need 200 points of this uh, interstellar research to master solid fuel thrusters, another 400 for um, oxalite uh, and petroleum uh, rockets and you need another 800 for hydrogen engines and liquid oxygen as your, your fuel sources. Um, likewise, down here, you have cargo bays, gas and liquid cargo bays, 
uh, biological cargo bays and sightseeing modules. You'll need these to bring back um, various plants and animals and whatnot. Uh, and sightseeing modules right now are kind of not very good because it doesn't make a lot of sense. There's a lot easier ways to get morale and stress down. But um, in any case, uh, you probably want to research this top area first and get your more advanced rockets uh, because that's what's going to allow you to get more of this interstellar research. But basically, every time you launch one of these missions, uh, let's go ahead and pause this just so I don't you know, have the rocket land while I'm talking. Um, when you launch one of these missions, for every research module you have, they will research one of these five things. And these things that have the double exclamation marks next to them, uh, once you research this, you find out what these um, sort of secret materials are. Um, I don't have, yeah, so let's go to this one, right? There are secret materials, unidentified resources on this asteroid, right? Uh, and if you once you research these things, you'll find out what those uh, secret resources are and be able to bring them back. Uh, here, since I've actually already done this mission once already, uh, we know what these are. So you need at least five research modules to get all of these done in one trip. And the reason why you want to run more research modules is that while doing each of these research things will get you 50 points, just sending a research module, independent of whether or not there's anything to research, just sending a research module to a destination will get you 10 points uh, of research per uh, per module that you send up, or it'll get you 10 data banks, which you can then convert into 10 points. So when we send nine research modules on our very first trip to this destination, we're going to get 250 research points, so 250 data banks, um, because we're doing all of this research. We're also going to get an additional 90 data banks for sending up nine research modules. And this is the thing. Um, a lot of players... Uh, veteran players too on the forums are, are kind of getting freaked out because they say, oh, but there's no gold on uh, on some of these asteroids. And so if I look at the Oxlite refinery, right, the Oxlite refinery uh, does not offer any recipes right now, but the Oxlite refinery takes in gold to produce Oxlite. So a lot of players were freaking out because they said, but I need Oxlite to do my research, right? How am I ever going to get, if my steam rockets can only reach these first two areas, that means I'm only going to get 250 research or data banks per, per asteroid, and I'm gonna be stuck at 500 uh, research points, which I, if I go to my research here, 500 is not quite enough for me to get to, uh, I mean, it's definitely not enough for me to get to cryofuel combustion, but it's not even enough, even if I was looking at some other asteroids and getting there with the solid fuel thrusters, it's not gonna be enough uh, to get me past this oxalite stage, right? So they're gonna say, we're never gonna be able to, to complete, we're never gonna be able to use a solid oxidizer tank, which means we're not gonna be able to use the petroleum engine, and which means we're never going to get to cryofuel combustion, and we're never going to expand our space program. But that isn't true. Um, the reality is you can launch these missions as often as you like. Right? You can just have these steam rockets launching, returning, launching, returning, going to the same destination over and over and over again, and they'll get you 900 res or they'll get you 90 research points per go. They'll get you 500 for researching the first two destinations that you have. But every trip uh, individually is also going to get you an extra 90 uh, because of this. So if we go to research here, if I'm launching two rockets per launch, each carrying nine research modules, which is the maximum amount that I can fit on there and still reach the destination, um, it's only going to take me five launches to get enough data banks to complete this entire chain, right? I'll get 500 uh, for just visiting the first two locations, and then on my first five launches, I'm going to get an extra uh, 900 uh, research points, right? Two rockets per launch, nine uh, things per module. That 500 plus 900, is 1400, which is equal to 200 plus 400 plus 800. That's enough to max out this entire thing. So just doing five launches of your pair of, of steam research rockets will be enough to get you to the next stage. And if you want to, you can just continue on doing steam rocket launches. They're not very resource intensive. And you could max out all of your solid cargo, liquid gas cargo, unique cargo, get all that stuff as well. Uh, that, of course, will take you 13 launches as opposed to five because you won't have that initial boost of the 500 uh, research points or 500 data banks at the beginning, uh, right? But 
that's an option available to you. You can skip entirely oxalate production and solid oxygen uh, as, as a fuel. You could skip petroleum entirely as a fuel if you wanted to and move straight to hydrogen rockets. That is a perfectly fine thing to do. But in either case, these steam rockets are gonna to have to be your first step. Whether or not you move on to petroleum plus oxalate or solid fuel thrusters or something like that, this is gonna be your first step. And I think this is what you should be doing uh, to build it. So uh, reviewing everything. You can dig out regolith from the surface, dump it into this area, store it in storage bins. This will form your steam generation. You can set up robo miners or just have continued manual digging to clear out uh, the area in front of your bunker doors. You set up an insulated tube, which you can allow to just vacuum out to space as you're building this. Uh, and then you start loading it up with your regolith, your hot regolith. Um, you build your rockets, you build your gantries. You build some airlocks, of course, beforehand to get in there. Um, you start uh, training up a, an, a an astronaut. You research your destination, and then you load your astronaut into the area. You start your steam generation. You get your steam into your steam engine. You launch your steam rocket, and you can continue launching and relaunching these steam rockets until you've completed as much of the research as you want to go on to whatever stage that you want. Okay, so... That's roughly speaking what you want to be accomplishing and this is sort of how you can accomplish it, right? Um, when this rocket is about to land, I'll just take this Atmos sensor, I'll click below, open up the doors, retract the gantry, let the rocket land, uh, and then I'll be able to close the doors back up once the rocket has landed and repeat. Now, a lot of people will say, you should be putting your, your rockets on the surface, right? And I think that's true for other rockets, but I don't think it's true for steam rockets uh, because I think that you, you end up spending about as much in resources to set up a rocket on the surface as you do just under the surface because um, you, don't, you don't need a lot of steel for your bunker tiles and bunker doors when it's below the surface. You'll have the surface to protect you, right? Like the rest of this could just be you know the regolith and, and asteroid uh, that's naturally occurring around here. If you build up you need to worry about asteroids coming in at an angle from the side, and you end up needing to build a large sort of uh, shield of bunker tiles uh, in order to protect your rocket. So there's a lot more steel usage in uh, building your rocket sort of on the surface. Also, the temperature of the steam that comes out is at 200 degrees Celsius, um, so it's not that hot, and it's a lot of water resources that you end up recovering every rocket launch. So it cuts down on your water usage as well to have this as an interior rocket. Uh, so I think the interior rocket cuts down on both your steel and water resources, which are some of your most important resources. Um, and also, I think that this is build is a good idea because it can form the basis for your next stage of rockets. And I'm gonna have a companion video to this, but basically um, this monstrosity over here is a converted steam rocket silo. I've taken this silo, this uh, this area right here, right? And I have converted it to what we have right here. Uh, and this basically is going to provide the platform, the launch platform for oil-based rockets or hydrogen-based rockets can work with either. Um, and it is going to, uh, in the process, provide a lot of the inputs that we need for these rockets. So again, this is gonna be a sort of separate companion video. I don't like, this is not really a new player thing that I'm going over here, um, but you can retrofit this rocket silo and I'm gonna have a video showing how. You can retrofit this area after you've dug it all out um, and reuse it as, um, as uh, the basis for your next stage in rocketry and, and space travel. Um, so I don't think the, the big downside to having it all be inside like this is that you need to dig out a large area. Like you might be more efficient in terms of water and in terms of steel, which are two really important resources. But of course, it's not very efficient in terms of duplicate time because you need to dig out this huge area. Whereas, you know, if you just put things on the surface, all this area is basically already dug out for you. So there are upsides and downsides to having an interior steam rocket, but I don't think that this effort is wasted because I think it's really easy to convert that area that you've spent all that time digging out into something that's going to uh, form the basis for your next rocket. Uh, so stay tuned for that video. Um, it, this is sort of the newer player thing where I'm just showing you how to do the steam rocket. 
I'm going to have the transition video where you retrofit your steam rocket into basically the, the basis for your petroleum rocket setup. Uh, but that's going to be a separate video. Okay, so I think that's it for this video. Um, I think I've covered pretty much everything. Uh, I should have made a list of all the things that I wanted to say because this is a pretty long list of things. Hopefully this is clear. Uh, if there are any questions about any of the components of this or any of the individual aspects of this or anything that I might have missed, uh, hit me up in the comments and I'll be around to answer questions about it. And uh, other than that, just stay tuned for the retrofit video, which will come out probably sometime this week, next week. I don't know. This is, I still have a little bit of work to do in terms of just getting the system running. Um, and uh, apologies for my last video where I didn't actually show the system working. Here we've actually shown a rocket launch. So, you know, the, the system does, does work. My, the system I made in the last video does work as well. This system works as well. Um, and, uh, and yeah, all right, I think that's it. I'm gonna cut the episode here and I'll see you guys next time.